we're going to cover buyer appointments and we're going to do just that. We're going to have a mock buyer appointment kind of like we did yesterday with our listing appointment. Um, and I'm just going to go about it. Buyer appointments are so easy, guys. I mean, I honestly show up usually with like nothing <laughs> because I've just, I've gotten it down at this point. I know what to talk to them about. I have my rhythm and I kind of, I, I do it like that. It's, it's very casual to be perfectly honest. At least my style is. Um, but most of the time I at least bring with me this buyer roadmap. Oh, I'll put it in the chat. Hold on one second. Let me put these things in the chat. Actually, I'm going to make you guys do a little bit of homework. So all of you have access to this document. This is in the Ignite toolkit. So if you're on Zoom, if you would like to follow along with this and find the buyer's roadmap, it is in your Ignite toolkit. All of you should have that available to you because I send out a welcome email that gives you a link to the Ignite toolkit that you can download. And all of it, and it has all kinds of like work stuff in there for you to run your business off of. So I usually show up with the buyer's roadmap and I like this because they can hang it on their fridge and it'll tell them exactly where they're at based, where they're at based on whatever. And then it also helps me explain to them the process on in the meeting with them. So it's like a handout for them, but it's also a handout for me so that I don't forget anything. We make sure we go through it all. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. But before we do, does anybody have any questions? Anybody? Hey, I have a question. Is that... Yeah. Is that form in there to cap for 12 months, or is that a different form? Or is this is the buyer's roadmap. It's in the Ignite toolkit. The toolkit is a the toolkit is a Google Drive, and it has all kinds of materials in it. So if it's search your email. Okay. Ignite toolkit. Yeah, if you just search email in your email Ignite toolkit, that email will pop up, and it'll take you to the link, and then you can download it. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so first things first, how do I look? Formal. I dressed up, right? She wore a fancy pants. I wore my fancy <laughs> pants. <laughs> I don't always dress up like this, usually when I don't know them, to be perfectly honest. Buyers, way more casual. It's a way more casual situation, at least in my mind. So I meet buyers and I'll wear jeans. I wear a nice clothes. I don't wear ripped jeans. I don't show up looking like in my band t-shirt and my ripped jeans and stuff like that. My band's on. But I definitely <laughs> literally named everything that I'm wearing today. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but if I was actually going to meet Melinda, like if she was going to buy with me, I, I know her very well. And I know that I could show up dressed like that and she's not going to have a problem with it. So know your audience. If it's a listing appointment, I highly recommend that you dress up like I did yesterday. I don't know. It just has a different connotation. With a buyer that I don't know, if I don't know them, I've never met them before, I'm dressed up. Because first impressions are everything. Sometimes my buyer's appointments are not at the office. Sometimes they're at mimosas. Sometimes they're at, like, the at last year I had a buyer. It's my friend. Like, they're very good friends of mine. I was like, guys, let's have fun with this appointment. Let's go get breakfast together. And we did. And I still went through everything, but we just did it over breakfast. I've done it over coffee. I've done it over lunch. I, so it's a much more casual conversation than it is for selling a home. Because you're really just talking about the buying process with them and the market. Some people get real, real professional, and some people don't. So it's all up to you and your style. And the reason that I say that is that there's no right way to do it. Sometimes my listing appointments, I walk in and I'm there for five minutes and we don't even talk about anything. We sign a listing agreement and we kind of move on. Like I've had that before. My, he's like a cousin of me, Joe. And I walked in, I talked about the house. I kind of talked about costs a little bit. They were like, all right, we're good with that. Right. And then sometimes I'm there for an hour and a half. It's the same with buyer appointments. Sometimes you're going to have a quick conversation. They're just, they just want to get comfortable with you. Maybe they don't need all the details. They're a high D personality. And then sometimes they're going to want to ask you all the questions in the world. I just had a buyer appointment with. They sent me the paper. Yeah, I don't think they knew it was an online class. Sorry, people are showing up for a different class. So the last buyer appointment, can you mute yourself? Oh, there we go. Look at you. Look at you. Up a little bit. There you go. Um, Okay, so the last buyer appointment I had was with this kid I used to babysit. And we went to our other office in Fair Oaks. Um, I wore a nice blouse like this and jeans and heels. 
Okay. Uh, we sat down and talked for a little bit, but they were very green. They're still in a lease. They needed to um, talk about getting out of that with their landlord. They also needed to get pre-approved. So I went through and I talked to them about what they wanted. I didn't get super deep with them because they had some homework to do. So I got, I got enough to where they were like, okay, cool. We feel good about this. We feel like we can do this. And then I sent them on their way and I got them hooked up with a lender to get pre-approved. We just got their pre-approval. I'm meeting them tomorrow afternoon and we're going deep because they talked to their landlord. Landlord's like, get out. We'd be happy to let you out. So now we're going to have another meeting. So it doesn't always go one meeting and then you're looking at property. Another guy, we met at a property. Because I've, I've actually known him for a while. So he was like, hey, Amy, I want to see this property. I didn't say, no, you're going to have to come into the office. Right? I like played it by ear. I was like, okay, yeah, let's go look at the property. And I went there and I talked to him about it. And he talked to me about what he was doing. Guy's loaded. I know he's got the money. So I'm not too worried about that part. And then we went through the process of getting him pre-approved. So I want you guys to understand that this can go. I kind of like, kind of just like play it by ear. Let my clients lead the way a little bit. Um, if you don't know the people, though, for safety purposes, I highly recommend that you try to get them to meet you at the office first. Um, if it's internet leads, just remember that you're going out and showing property, and if it's a vacant property and you're meeting a stranger there, there's some safety that goes along with that, so just be careful. Okay, so let's go ahead and... What's that say? It says participant guide. Okay. Oh, okay. I just saw that there was a chat. Oh. Know if anybody had a question. No, thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to pretend that she's checked into the office. Sam's been really kind, asked her for water and all that, and she's just waiting for me, and now I'm walking in, right? Hi, Melinda, how are you doing? Hey, how are you, It's so Amy? good to see you. Nice Thanks for you. coming to meet with me. You're welcome. So we're going to be buying a house, right? Absolutely. Okay, hold on one second. I forgot my pen. Let me go grab it, which happens all the time. You're probably going to have to grab a pen from the office. I got it. I got a pencil. Okay, good. I got a pencil. Okay. All right, cool. Thanks so much for waiting for me. So let's talk about this. Okay. You want to buy a house. I do. Tell me what's going on. Um, renting right now, ready to buy. Okay. Renting and ready to buy. I'm going to take some notes. That's okay, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I just don't want you to think I'm doodling. Yeah. Renting. Okay. And where are you renting right now? Um, in Ray Linda. Okay. Well, what's your rent? Uh, what, what are you paying? 18. Okay, cool. So you're basically paying a mortgage anyway. Pretty much. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the primary, I'm guessing that you're buying, are you, I shouldn't assume, who are you buying this with? My husband. Okay, awesome. Are, are you going to be the primary showing contact or would he be the primary showing contact? What do you mean? Um, as who's, who's the, who are the parents in the relationship? I'm assuming that it's you. We don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So who's going you to be like, my, yeah, who's the person that I'm going to want to get into contact first when a house is never in? Right? So That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so Melinda's going to be my primary contact. Um, and the best way to reach you is through text. Oh, That's how we were yeah. texting mostly. Okay, cool. Um, so what's prompting you to move? Other than you're paying rent and then still living in a house. <laughs> Money's cheap to borrow right now, so might as well okay. hop on the bandwagon. Okay, so money is cheap. Why else do you want to own a home? Um, because I'm 41 and I haven't done that yet. Okay. <laughs> so bucket list. That's yep. what I'm going to write down. Okay, great. Uh, when do you need to move? Do you have a set deadline? No. No? I've talked to my rental, my property manager, and my lease expires in a month, but they're okay with me extending it month, you know, month to month, or I can leave early if I have to. Okay. Awesome. Did you get pre approved yet? Nope. Okay, cool. Do you have a, what's your price range? One million. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, this is my dream, right? This is a really good conversation. This conversation just went really well for me. 400,000. Okay. And have you been looking around at homes online? Yes. Have you seen anything that you like in the price range? Um, no. No. Okay. What if you, what if, what does your price range look like when you when you see something that you like? Probably more like three fifty. 
I mean 500. Okay. <laughs> I went the opposite way there. Okay, have you talked to your lender about getting you up to a $500,000 free approval? That's a possibility. Okay. So I would go back to them and say, hey, I'm just not seeing what I like. That actually happened with me when I um, when I first got into uh, getting pre-approved, mm -hmm. they pre-approved me for 250 and I could not get what I wanted for that. So I went back to them and I said, hey, this isn't really the amount that I want. And they gave me a plan that said, okay, here's what you need to do. And it consisted of one, making more money. And then two, <laughs> so that was, that was part of it. Um, and two, it was paying off some debt. So it could be a situation where maybe you just need to pay off a little bit of debt. Um, or maybe you need to bring in a co-signer or something like that, but you can talk to them about that. Okay. Um, if, you, if we found you something like today that met all of your needs, would you be ready to put in an offer? Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, so I want to talk about um, the price range that you're at, the 400 and you not finding what you're looking for. Before we go out and talk with the lender, I mean, we definitely need to do that because if you're not finding what you're looking for, then you're not going to want to buy a house. Right. Um, but let's talk about that. So, what is it about the range at 400 in the homes that you're seeing that you're not you're not really keen on? Well, I'd like to be in a room with this. Okay. And I'd like for it to have a good size yard for my dog. Okay. And um, most of the homes in Yerlinda are either on like have no backyard or they have like an acre. Mm -hmm. So, more, more land is what I need. Okay. So more land, and then. Okay, so is a is an acre good for you? What does a good backyard mean to you? Um, just enough room to throw a ball and have there be more land, a little like a little bit more yard for my dogs. I don't need something super big, but not super small either. So like a half acre? Yeah. Okay. But if it felt spacious enough, even if it wasn't necessarily a half acre, you would probably right. be okay with it. Yeah. Um, you know, like a third of an acre is still pretty big. So that might be an option for you too. Um, who's going to be living in the home with you? Me, my husband, and my two kids, and my four dogs. From oh. Yerlinda. How old are your kids? Uh, 19 and 16. <coughs> boys or girls? Boys. And they smell. As boys do. <laughs> well, I have two girls, and trust me, they stink too. They stink too. Oh, great. Right. Um, okay, so your husband, your boys, 19 and 16, and four dogs. What kind of dogs do you have? I have two German Shepherds and a Shih Tzu. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's so cute. I love German Shepherds. They stink too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, I spelled, probably spelled Shih Tzu the wrong way. Anyways. <laughs> Will anyone else be spending more than an occasional overnight stay with you? Like, do you have your parents come and visit? Do you have I family? Do. You do? Okay, good. So, so you're going to need space for all these people. So husband, boys, dogs, family. Um, yeah, if there's an extra room, great. If there is room for an RV, because typically okay, when cool. they come in, they have an RV. So if there's RV access, great. If not, then they're just going to have to figure it out. Okay. <laughs> Like maybe, maybe we'll put him a tent. Maybe we'll put him a tent out yeah. on the land. That I don't want to spot like buy the home based on that. They live in Idaho. They come in one time. Okay. Yeah. So what do you want to buy a home based off of? Um, just being comfortable and having enough room for us to not be on top of each other. Okay. What's the current size of your home? Um, a two bedroom, one bath. So, rough. Yeah. 1800 Yikes. Okay, cool. Um, what do you guys do in your home? What do you enjoy doing? We watch a lot of movies. Mm. Okay. So, we need a good living room? Yeah. Space for a TV? You got a big TV? Oh. <laughs> big couch? What else do you guys do for fun? We eat. Okay. <laughs> so kitchen, do you cook? Yes. Kitchen is important? Yes. And do you need an office in your home? No. No? 
Um, do you have any special needs that need to be accommodated with your health? I don't think so. Okay. You mean like a wheelchair ramp or like anything, anything like that? Yeah. Like what would that include? Wheelchair ramp, low countertops, high countertops, bar um, area I mean, for. Like a bar? No, not an actual oh, okay. bar. I mean, <laughs> if you'd like me to find you a house with a bar, I'm happy to do so. Um, but no, just, and you're in Rio Linda. There's a bar down the street. There's two of them. You're going to be fine. Um, no, I just mean like a top where you can roll up to or anything like that. No. Okay. Okay. Um, any athletic equipment or anything that you need to, anything big, like that needs to be stored and anything special that your dogs have large kennels or anything like that? Yes, that need to be inside. Okay, so they're typically, yeah, I was hoping for like a dining room area and also like a, just like, you know how kitchens have like a little nook off the side because we mm -hmm. have a small Like a breakfast bowl. nook? Yeah, and then maybe the dog kennels could go in the actual dining room. Okay. Okay, cool. Like I would just make that the dog's room. Awesome. Okay. Um, when people come to your home, what do you want them to say about you? My dogs are so cute. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. Just like a, a welcoming environment. It doesn't. I'm not very crafty with decorating, so that's out the window. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we've got some things to overcome. Yeah, we do. Is there anything that I should know about your lifestyle that I haven't asked? I don't think so. Okay. Do you have any like work equipment? Do you need? Um, you said that your husband, or I don't know, maybe you didn't. Did you say you needed a shop? I mean, a shop would always be a plus. Um, he does work. I would like a garage. We needed to have a garage. Okay, let's have garage. At least a two-car garage. At least a two-car garage or a shop of some sort or like a barn, someplace that he can escape to, to go to like work on whatever. Okay. All right. So you told me that your ideal location is Rio Linda. Are you open to any outside areas? Um, yeah, Pleasant Grove. Okay. East Nicholas. Um, probably about it. Alberta. Yes, Alberta. Aha! Forgot about Alberta. Everybody does. Okay. No antelope. I mean, I've looked at homes in Antelope, and they don't, they're not really on a big enough piece of property for me, so if you find something in Antelope, sure. Okay. Um, North Highlands, and I don't mean North Highlands past what avenue? You mean what avenue for the freeway? Uh, I mean what avenue, like what avenue in Antelope? Oh. I Street right there? Yeah. So North there's... Walmart. Um, no, it's actually, do you know where the quick crack is on... What Avenue? I do. That's right on there. I Street. Walmart's way further down, but I Street right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, on this side of Watt, not the North Highlands side. Mm -hmm. It's still considered North Highlands, but there's like houses right there that have property. There's some really cute yeah. houses right there. I would be open to it. Okay. Once I put in that it needs to have a third of an acre, it's going to eliminate a lot of these places. Yeah. But I don't like to leave them out just because there are portions of these neighborhoods that are underdeveloped because they have larger lots. And so they're like kind of country and they pop in out of nowhere. And it's like in the middle of North Highlands has this too. Is there's a section right by Madison and the freeway. And if you drive into that neighborhood, it's rural. Yeah. There's like, half acre parcels and there's no sidewalks and you can't even tell that you're in the middle of North Highlands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm fine. Everywhere's ghetto right now. So as long as it doesn't look ghetto, I'm game. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, where do you work? Property management company. Okay. Where's that located? In New Summit. Okay. So you want to be in those areas because it's close to work too. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Are schools going to be important to you? Like no, which school in Rilinda they're assigned to? Or my son else? goes to Rilinda and he only has two years left. And I, he can stay there at Rilinda and that's fine this year. Okay. Um, anything else really important about the location? 
like anywhere in the Reeland area that you don't want. No, I don't think so. You're okay with in town? Yes. Even off if it's right off of M Street? It would depend on the area, but yes. Okay, because <laughs> there's this little, there's a little neighborhood in there and they do have bigger lots. Okay. Um, I don't know if they'll be like a third of an acre, but they do have bigger lots. So yeah. You're okay with it? I am. Okay, cool. Um, do you have a preference for when the house was built? Should I have a preference for when the house It's going to hinder you a quite a bit if you do. What do you mean? Um, some people don't want a house that's built in the 1920s. Well, I'm looking in Rolinda and there's not much new development in there, so I don't think it matters to me. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, do you want a house that's moved in condition or are you willing to do some work on it? I would be willing to do some work. Okay, tell me about that. What kind of work are you willing to do? Um, I'm willing to paint. I'm willing to do, I mean, I think it just depends on, like, I'm not willing to give it a new roof. Okay. I'm not willing to put a new septic in. Um, okay, so you want everything to be functioning properly, and then you'll come in and put your lift yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are you looking for single family homes only? Um, so not a condo, not a townhome, you're not interested in um, anything like that whatsoever. Yeah. Okay. Um, any kind of like styles that you prefer, styles that you're really up with, that you're really like, I will not buy a house like that? I don't think so. Okay. Spanish style. I mean, if you can get a log cabin in Rwanda, let's do it. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. But <laughs> yes. I mean, that. I think that's everyone's dream, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. And then let's talk about house size. What kind of size are you looking for? I mean, not too big. We don't have a lot of furniture. Like our table is a four-person table. We do have three dog kennels. Um, we have a small desk, but I could really get rid of that. Um, What's the size? You're, you're in a two-bedroom, one-bath right now, so that's like, what, a thousand square foot? Yeah. Okay, so any big thing between... You know, like twelve hundred and fifteen. I just gonna be happy. Yeah, I just don't want like a three thousand square foot house because I don't have anything to fit in it. Absolutely, it would, that, and then we would need walkie talkies. If your million dollar budget was yeah. real, then we'd be talking about that. <laughs> but no, let's be serious. Okay. You know, like four four hundred to five hundred is probably going to get you around um, a fifteen hundred square foot home, seventeen hundred square foot home. Um, if you're going under 400, then you could probably get like a 1,200 square foot, 1,300 square foot. Okay. I've seen some really cute homes that are 400 and really like that. I don't know if they're just like they just pop up randomly every once in a while, like maybe you haven't been on the hunt. Mm -hmm. But I think once you're actually on the hunt for a house, um, you're going to see a lot more of those pop up than you think. Okay. Well, and I've seen the pictures online. I just haven't walked any of them. Right. And I'll, I'll be honest, the house that I just built in or built. I wish. <laughs> the house that I just bought in January, um, the pictures were horrific. In, in fact, I didn't want to go. <laughs> and on my way there, I was like, this is going to be a waste of time. And then I stepped inside and I was like, this is my home. <laughs> so I, the, and I'm going to talk to you more about the market that we're in and why it's really important that we actually go look at the property. Okay. Um, so we know that you're looking for something bigger than a thousand. Do you care if it's a two-story? Um, I don't care. Okay. okay. Um, do you want a porch or a deck, or does that matter to you? Probably the porch, but not needed. Okay. Um, are you concerned about the exterior siding being wood, or do you prefer stucco, or does that matter? Does not matter. Okay. Um, we talked about the garage, right? You need a two-car mm -hmm. minimum. Yes. Do you have to have a swimming pool or a hot tub or anything like that? Mm. No. Okay. Um, are you looking for any kinds of structures like a greenhouse or a shed? I know we talked about a shop, but I just want to. I do not have a greenhouse. Okay. So mm -hmm. that would actually, I don't need that at all. So maybe just a she shed to go kill the plants in. That's correct. Okay, cool. All right, so we're not really looking for anything like that. Are there any other exterior features that are going to be really important to you? What, what, what do you mean? Anything else on the outside of the property that's going to be really important? Grass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that important though, like landscaping. Well, yeah, landscaping like, really I don't want rocks. Like I need somewhere for my dogs to run. 
Okay. Landscaping is not important. I just need I just need grass. Okay, and grass is expensive, right? It's expensive and expensive to maintain too, but that's uh, the American sure dream. That. The American dream. Yeah. Um, what kind of style do you like for the interior? Are you into contemporary, traditional, cozy? What's your I don't really have a style other than I paint a lot of photos. Okay. Is that what you mean? I just mean in terms of like finishes and stuff like that, like warm colors, light colors, cool colors. No, do you know what I mean? That's all I like that. Okay. Okay, good to know. Do you have a specific floor plan that you prefer? Like everybody wants an open floor plan. Everybody wants to see everything, kitchen open to everything. And then I had a client that I asked this question to and they said, no, I actually don't like that. I want my kitchen to be a room. I want my dining room to be a room. They wanted rooms. How, how do you feel about that? I don't know that I feel either way until okay. I start to move it out. Okay, awesome. So no all. So rooms. I would be open to looking at both. Okay, no houses with locks on all doors. Well, that would be a touch. <laughs> <laughs> um, in general, are there any likes or dislikes or anything that you're like, I have to have this. I cannot have this in a house. Um. I have to have a second bathroom. Okay, there we go. And I can't think of anything that I can think of that like I would be like, no, thank you. I probably wouldn't use a fireplace. Okay, so but I wouldn't not buy a house because it has a fireplace. Fireplace, no or, big deal. Or, or a ghost. I don't really want to. Okay, well, I'll try to look out for those. They don't usually disclose themselves until after you move in. <laughs> no, as a real, my real estate agent, I need to spend the night. <laughs> <laughs> Only if your budget was a million dollars. Gosh dang it. Because then I would definitely spend a night on houses. <laughs> and you probably wouldn't care if it was haunted either, to be honest. No, no. <laughs> would you care? Yeah. No matter what. Um, okay, so bedrooms. We're looking for at least three, right? Yes. Okay. So a 3-2 is really the minimum that we're looking for. Yeah. Um, and for your master bedroom, are there any preferences? Does your bath, does your second bathroom have to be inside the master? Preferably. Okay. But if it wasn't, and you still like the rest of the house, would you? Yeah. Okay. Um, you need two bathrooms. Are there any specific needs for the bathrooms? Do you have to have a bathtub? No. Okay. Good to know. You'd be surprised if someone had a bedroom they didn't want, and people have little kids, and they're like, there's no bathtub. Yeah. Can't buy the house, no bathtub. Um, what about your kitchen? What kind of features do you want your kitchen to have? Um, I would just like it to be big enough for at least three people to sleep in and not like run into each other. Okay. No specific needs. Gas, fire, gas, a big stove. Big or electric doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Any kind of finishes you're really going for, or just do you, do you mind? Or countertops. <laughs> <laughs> can we get that info? I think there's actually a specific on the MLS to search for homes. I think there actually is a specific glitter count. I'm kidding. Oh my god. Glitter epoxy is <laughs> oh, like, right the thing. And if I was single, I would totally do Heavy that. would not be down? No. I see, also won't let me paint the wall black. Rude. I know. I'm, I'm, painting, my, I'm painting my daughter's bedroom black. A stylish black. A stylish matte black. black. Matte black. Stylish matte black. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, so, why don't you just make it like me? I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about your dining room? So you said you have a small table. Um, so the dining room is really going to be used for the kettles, right? Yeah. Did I hear that right? And I don't want, I won't put them in like a room. Because they, okay. they, they, their kennels are open all the time and they just go to sleep in there like while we're watching TV. So it's like I want them closed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excuse me. Um, Living room, family room, we talked about, you don't care about a fireplace. 
We talked about um, your furniture that's in there. Anything else that I should know about the inside of the house that you're looking for? No. Okay. So top five things your home must have. Yard with grass. Three bedrooms. Two bathrooms. Room for the dogs. Garage. Garage. Okay, good. See, I like that. And then beyond those five things, what's something that you really, really want to have? Um, I mean, I guess I would say eventually room for a pool. Okay. If we ever hit the lotto and decide to <laughs> do that. Garage. If you could have anything else beyond that, what would it be? Um, gosh, I don't know. I, I guess I never really thought about it. The computer countertops would probably be top of my list. Okay. But, um, like, what sort of answer would you be looking for? Like, what do people say? This is my first time buying a home. I know. So, what are my options? <laughs> what are my options are? Some people really need, like, I need big closets. I have a lot of clothes. I need a big closet. If I walk into a, a master bedroom, and there's one closet and it's a regular size closet, I'm going to start looking around like, where am I going to put all of my stuff? I have a really big couch. So when I walk into a room, I kind of look at like, how am I going to separate this couch? And I literally, in the home I bought, I love the house so much, I was like, I'll just separate the couch out. So I have pieces that don't go together anymore. And it looks great. I figured it out. But just things like that, like, Think about the items that you have in your house and the way that you live right now. I would need a big closet. Amy? Or two closets? And I would uh, I would probably need room. I would definitely need room somewhere on the property to be for an extra fridge and an extra freezer. Okay. See how long it took me to get that out of her? Mm -hmm. See how deep I had to go? Give some examples of my own. And I'm in real estate and I didn't know how to answer that question. So <laughs> <laughs> So you really do like this, this thing that I'm going through, super important. Because they some of these questions seem really redundant. And then you I just check in again and they're like, oh yeah, this thing that I needed to. Oh yeah, this thing that I needed to. Okay, so I know that you want to live in real Linda and all that. What's your think about in real Linda? or in East Nick, or in um, Pleasant Grove, or in Alberta, think about, have you driven down a street where you're just like, oh, this is the dream? Yeah, there's, there's a, like a log cabin house in East Nicholas that was amazing. Do you know the street name? Nicholas Daniel. Okay, so log cabin. But talk to me about the neighborhood. Was the house itself, oh, there's no neighborhood. So that's the difference between going from Rolanda and Alberta to yeah. like Pleasant Grove or East Nick, it's like, you own like 12 acres. Yeah, and, and you like you're not a neighbor. No, I don't necessarily like that. I do like having neighbors. I talk to, and my, I love my okay. neighbor's dogs. But um, there's just a big jump. Yeah, of absolutely. Property, and I don't necessarily, there's no way I can maintain that. I don't need that much property. I'm not growing rice. Yeah. They do out there. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> they do. My gas for me can't work. I totally understand what you're talking about. Okay. So um, so your ideal neighborhood is more like real Linda or Albert. Okay. And you don't want a lot of land. Not necessarily. I would rather spend money on the house. Okay. Um, in real Linda itself, is there, are there any like streets or neighborhoods that you really love driving down or really like looking at? Um, probably more toward like going towards El Paso Heights. Uh-huh, like 16? Mm -hmm. No. Wait, where should I see? Marysville Boulevard? Yes. Okay. Any um, favorite shops or conveniences that you need to have nearby? I only use for about five minutes away. Well, if you're, you're in Maryland, you're pretty yeah. good. You're pretty fast. Um, recreational facilities do you go to? 
gym. Like the gym. I do go to the gym in the morning. Okay. Like once a month. So. Okay. No. <laughs> um, any additional like items or anything that you think of that like I need my neighbor for them to have like sidewalks or anything yeah. like that. No, not really into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything that you can think of right now that you're like, I gotta tell her this, and she asked so many yeah. dang questions. Um, about the house, no. I don't think so. Anything that I need to know about you or family or anything that I need to know? Anybody else that's gonna be a part of this by like people that are decision makers? They might not be on the lawn, they might not be on the house, but there's somebody that you. My son will for sure speak his mind and tell you this house is stupid or this house is great. Okay, which one? The older one. Okay, Eli. No. No. Dylan. Dylan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I gotta get on Dylan's good side. That's correct. So good luck. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sweet. <laughs> you figure oh, my daughter's a Taurus, and Taurus and Libra's going to, we're going to be best friends. Okay, good. Don't trip. Good. Don't trip. We're going to be just fine. Okay, good. Well, I asked you all of these questions because I really just want to get on the same page with you. Do you feel like we're on the same page when it comes to looking for a house? I think so. Yeah. Um, because when I go out and look at properties with you, and when I pick properties for you, and just the entire process. I look at it from your eyes, not my eyes, because my eyes don't matter. I don't have to live there, mm -hmm. and I don't have to pay for it. You do. Um, so when we go and look at properties, I remember these things. Yeah. Um, when you're looking to see, does my couch fit? Do I like it? Does it feel good? I'm looking at, does the roof look good? Because she doesn't want to replace the roof, right? Yeah. Does the heater look good? What does the water heater look like? What does this property look like? Does it have? Is it checking all of her boxes? Is there a garage, right? <clears throat> so if you send me properties and you're like, oh my God, I love this property, and I find one of these items is not here, I'm going to point that out to you. It's not to be poke holes in your dreams. It's just to remind you of, hey, this didn't have one of those items that you really, really wanted. Are you still sure that you want to look at it? Yeah. And then you get to decide, oh yeah, you're right. Maybe we shouldn't look at it. Maybe we should just in case, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, do you have any questions so far? How competitive is the market? Like, if I fall in love with, that's my biggest fear: is looking at a house and sending it to you, and then like not getting it, or mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Absolutely. Um. So the market is depending depends upon the house. The if the house is priced accurately and is desirable, it's going to sell very quickly, probably within four to seven days. So you could very well fall in love with a house online and it be gone already. Okay. So I highly recommend that you do not do that to yourself. The house that you you mean don't fall in love with don't it. fall in love with any okay. home. Not possible. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but after today you're gonna look at things a little bit differently and you're gonna okay. stop and you're gonna say, Amy told me not to fall in love with it, so I'm not going to. I like it. I want to go look at it if it's available. Okay. Um, so here's how it usually works. Um, you're already pre-approved. You're going to talk to your lender about getting a little bit more if you can and if you like that payment. That's another thing to consider. Do I want to spend more money with this higher payment? Is Am I okay with that? Um, and then once you're dead set on, yes, let's go out and look at property, then I start sending you properties. So you don't have to go look for anything. I will send it. I also have an app that I'll give you that you can look up homes yourself. Um, and then once you find a property that you like, you send me the address and I call the listing agent and I find out what's going on. All of the homes are going to have multiple offers. Don't let that steer you away from anything. If I tell you, yes, they already have one offer on the table, that's not meaning that we're not going to go look at that property or try for it. It just means that you need to know that they've already got an offer available. I have to tell you that because as your fiduciary, I'm required to tell you everything that I know about that property. So if I don't tell you there's an offer on the table and then you find out later, I'm not doing my job. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So every home's going to need to have multiple offers. That's not the problem. We're not worried about that. I want to look at properties that are a little bit under your budget so that way multiple offers aren't a problem because we can bid up on that property and wind up coming in the highest. Okay. So, Say that you get pre-approved for 500 and you're like, yes, I'm okay with that payment. We're going to start looking at homes around 450. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. And the reason being is that the home, it's not that the home is not worth 500. It's just that as a real estate agent, I know when I sell a home, my ultimate goal is to get the most for the seller. 
And in order to do that, I underpriced properties. So a lot of the properties that are on the market right now are actually underpriced. And they do that on purpose because they want to get multiple offers, because they want to get someone in there who's going to bid it up, possibly take the home as is, possibly um, remove contingencies. That's, that's something that they're looking for. Okay. Now, if you're like, yeah, I'm not really into that. I would rather just be the only offer on a home and I don't really want to compete. And maybe I want to get my closing costs paid for. Maybe I want to get repairs done on the property. In order to do that, then I love to look at properties that have been on the market for a while. They probably look overpriced. So say that you're pre-approved for 500,000 and there's a property that's been on the market for 45 days at 500,000, we can definitely go look at that property. And the reason being is that they don't have any offers. So you can't see not necessarily desperate, but they just don't have any other offers. That's why they're on the market for 45 days. Yeah. They're a little bit overpriced. So an example, the property that I just purchased, I, I was just in your shoes. I got pre-approved. I want to buy a house in the middle of this crazy market. And I, I was pre-approved for, I could probably get whatever I, I needed at the time. And, um, but I had a budget. I wanted to stick to 450 and under, like I had to for me payment wise. And um, all the homes that had beautiful countertops, beautiful cabinets, beautiful floors, everything that was redone, if it was on for 450, it was selling for five or more. Um, and there were multiple offers. People are removing contingencies. People are, um, they're just going all out to try to win, right? It's very competitive. So I said, well, I'm just not gonna look at those homes. And so I ran a search for um, all the homes in the area I wanted, which was Rialinda, and I looked for the homes that had been on the market for the longest. And I went and looked at those homes. And I wound up putting in offers on, I put in three offers, and I asked for all of my closing costs to be paid on every offer. I offered them what they wanted because it was supposedly overpriced, but I asked them to pay my closing costs because they paid me $13,000 up front. Mm -hmm. um, and I wound up getting an offer accepted. And that is unheard of. When I tell people I got my closing costs paid for, they're like, did you get it off market? No, I just went after properties that didn't look like the shiny diamond object that everybody wants, right? So this house that I bought had RV access, point, point two of an acre, RV access, um, very clean house, needs new carpet, new paint, all the stuff that you're willing to do. I probably even need to redo all the bathrooms and things like that. Um, but I wound up getting them to pay my closing costs. We did inspections. We got repairs done by the seller because there was no other offers on the table. Um, and the house appraised for 10,000 more than what I paid for it. And it was technically overpriced and the seller was about to drop the price to 435. So we can find you a house okay? and we can find it in your budget and we could probably get your closing costs paid for and we can get the repairs done that you don't want to do. We just can't do that on the shiny diamond that everybody's going after. Okay. But that's that's good. I mean, I actually like that everybody goes after those shiny diamonds because it leaves the real diamonds in the rough for me to find. So if you're down to take that journey with me, um, then then I'm, I'm, I'm down to help you with that too. If you're looking for the shiny diamond, then it's going to be a more competitive market. And so if you're pre-approved for 500, we're going to start looking between 400 and 450. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. Okay, so any other questions before I move into my next segment? I don't think so. Okay, cool. I kind of want to go over this buyer roadmap with you. Okay. Just to give you an idea of the process. Um, and you might even have some more questions after we go through this. But the first step is right here. You're meeting with a real estate professional. Um, and so that's me. Now, I can be placed as your fiduciary. In order for that to happen, we need to have an agreement that we're going to work together exclusively. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And the reason that I do that is when you work with me, you're working with a small business, you actually help support my family. Um, I am a small business here in the local area. And so I'm only able to give my time to those that are committed to me. Does that make sense? Because if I ran around with a bunch of buyers that wound up buying homes through other agents, I wouldn't be able to feed my kids. Okay. Okay. So I will work exclusively with you and that means that I'm going to send you properties immediately as soon as they come on the market. If I find any properties that are off market, I'm going to bring those to you to 
that I can. Um, I'll be available to answer all of your questions and available to show you property. Okay. The next step would be to get pre-approved, but look, you already skipped that part and got that done before me, so you're already set. And now we're on to searching for new homes. Okay. So I am going to set you up on an MLS portal. I'm also going to give you my app. They're kind of going to be the same information, but I feel like more information is better than no information. Okay. Does that make sense? So I'll give you my app to search for homes. I'll give you the MLS to search for homes. I'm going to send you homes automatically through your email. As soon as the home hits the market, you're going to get an email. Okay. Um, then you'll reach out to me and say, hey, I'm, I want to go look at this property, or I want to go look at these properties, and then we'll work out a time together that works for both of our schedules to go out and look. Mm -hmm. when, um, when do you think would be the best time for you to look at properties? Probably in the evening for my new friends. Okay, perfect. That's usually when my buyers want to look at property, so that's perfect. Okay. Um, I actually am a coach, and I have a ton of agents that work underneath me. So if there was ever a point in time that you wanted to look at a property in the evening and I wasn't directly available, then I have an agent who can meet you there, open the door for you, and at least let you look at the property. And then okay. you can call me with any questions. Is that something you'd be okay with? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, good. I just don't ever like to leave anybody hanging. Okay. Um, so we're going to search for homes. And then we're going to go out and start looking. I don't expect the first one that you see you put an offer in, but that has happened before, so don't be afraid of that. Okay. If you walk into the first one that you see and you're like, oh my God, this is perfect, let's put an offer in on it, right? Um, we may put in multiple offers. So you may pin in a couple offers before you get an offer accepted. Okay. Remember my story? I put in three offers before I actually got one accepted. Yeah. Um, so we're going to make an offer. And then once we've made our offer, we're going to move into the negotiation stage. We could be, we could receive a counter offer back from the seller, changing some of the terms. We might, um, there might be multiple offers in case you're looking at one of those homes. And so we're going to go through a bit of some negotiations back and forth. Okay. And this once we have an accepted offer, that's when we say that we are under contract. Okay. So once you get under contract, there's a few items that you'll want to know about that are costs that you'll need to pay out of pocket up front. You can use a credit card, but you just need to check in with your lender for that first. Okay. So don't use your credit during this process unless your lender gives you the okay to. Okay. Don't spend any money. Don't quit your job. Don't buy a car. <laughs> don't do any of that unless the lender says you're okay to do that. Um, first things first, once you have an accepted offer, within three days of acceptance, you're going to need to put in a deposit. A deposit is kind of like when you rent a property. You gotta hold it. So um, that's going to be put into an escrow account. It doesn't go directly to the seller. It will be held there while we're in contract. If at any point in time you need to back out using one of your three contingencies, you will get your deposit back. If you follow through with the sale, the deposit is credited towards your down payment. Okay. Okay. It's usually about 1% of closing costs. So if you bought a $500,000 home, it's a $5,000 deposit. Are you okay with putting that out there? Okay, cool. And it'll just come out of the down payment and then credit back to you. Okay. Um, so I talked about three contingencies. You have three ways for you to back out of the sale should you need to. The first is your inspection contingency. I usually get us about 10 days to complete inspections. Okay. Okay. I order them. You can order them through whatever company you want. If you want to use your own companies, I'm totally okay with that. I have companies that I work with all the time that give me a hookup. And they get me on the schedule pretty quickly. So if you're okay with it, we can use my company. Which would you prefer? You. Okay, great. Um, so I recommend four different inspections. The first inspection is a pest inspection. They're going to check for termites, bugs. They're going to check for dry rot, water intrusion. This is one of the most important inspections that you'll get. Okay. It's about $150. I pay for that? You do pay for that. So I'm going to write that here. Pest, $150. Okay. The second inspection that you're going to get that's also equally important is a sewer line inspection. Some homes in Rio Linda are on a septic. If it's on a septic, you'll luck out because I'm going to ask the seller to drain it and inspect it themselves. It's pretty common. Okay. But if it's on a sewer line, then you'll get the sewer line scope. That's a $200 charge. Okay. The next is the home and the roof inspection. They come together. Um, that depends on the size of the property, but it's usually about $350 to $450. Okay. 
You don't have to remember any of this. Okay? I'm just putting this on here so you can be prepared for that. But when the time comes and we start moving towards this, I remind you of all these things. Mm -hmm. So the home inspection comes with the roof inspection, and these are the four that I recommend. Okay. The other thing, so oh, if, I have, if I have a roof inspection done and they say it needs to be a roof and the current owner doesn't want to put it on, I'm out $350. Correct. Got it. Yeah. Also, you will get an appraisal done. The lender is going to, that's going to be through the lender directly. It's going to be about $750. What do you mean through the lender directly? The lender is going to order the appraisal. Oh, okay. So I won't have anything to do with that. The lender will ask you for it, and you'll pay them directly. Okay. You'll actually pay all of these companies directly. Okay. Now, um, so I want to talk to you about your question. If I get an inspection done, and the roof needs to be completely redone, and the seller doesn't want to do it, am I out? Yes, you are. Most of the time, though, the seller has a need to sell the home. No one's going to buy a home with a bad roof. Most of the time, I can negotiate to get the seller to replace the roof, and they'll pay for it through escrow. So just like on my house, we did inspections, the sewer line and the pest inspection. There was $5,000 in sewer line repairs, and there was um, $4,000 in pest inspection repairs, and I, had to, I was able to get the seller to do both. Okay. Because if they don't, then they have to take those reports and tell the next buyer, <clears throat> hey, we've got all these problems with the house. And then what do you think is going to happen? So when they take it as is, they know how to do the work. Pretty rare for a buyer to take a house as is with a bad roof. Yeah. They're either going to want it fixed or they're going to want money off. So the seller can either pay for it out of pocket, pay for it in escrow, keep the buyer that they have happy and close on time, or they have to start the process all over again and still replace the roof. Okay. So it's in their best interest. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and that's why I go around and I look at things. So when we're looking at property, that's why I'm not looking at where your couch will fit with you. I'm walking around to look at the roof, to look at the air conditioner, to look at the hot water heater, because I don't want to get you in a situation where you're paying for all this stuff, and then you get blindsided. So I'll tell you if, the, if I think that the air conditioner looks old. If it's rusted over and it's got a bunch of, you know, in the filter and it's like there's a lot of spaces, you can see it looks worn down. They can last forever with maintenance if you maintenance them properly mm -hmm. but at some point in time you have to know that that thing could go out at some point right yeah um and so i like to always um look at those things ahead of time so that way we don't get you into a situation where you're like oh the roof is shot and we probably could have told we probably could have seen that from the beginning okay does that make sense yeah okay so after we get through our inspection phase and the appraisal phase um that's when we move into the closing phase right so closing is actually like a week-long process. And a lot of people think, oh, I signed documents, I get the keys that day. That's not actually how it goes down. We usually do a final walkthrough. You'll sign documents. Those documents have to go back to the lender. They have to review them. And then the lender has to send money. You have to send money. So it's really a week-long process. So with your landlord currently, I would highly recommend that you do not give a 30-day notice or any type of notice until we have finished our inspection process. The reason being is that it also helps you with moving. Nobody likes to have to move in one day, right? And if you give a 30-day notice as soon as we get into contract, that means that by the time we close, you have one day to move out. But what if closing is delayed? Yeah. Things happen all the time. We try to abide by the contract, but I'm just telling you, prepare for delays with anything that we work through. Okay. So I highly recommend you do your 30-day notice at the end of the inspection period. That will give you a two-week overlap. So that way you'll be able to have time to move, have time to clean, do what you need to do, and feel a little bit relaxed about it. Also, when you, um, depending upon when you close on a property, your mortgage is the next month after. So like, I didn't get lucky. I closed too early in the month. I closed at the beginning of the month. My mortgage was due February. If I would have closed after the 15th, my mortgage wouldn't have been due until March. We'll try to work it out that way. It just depends on how we fall, okay? Um, and then once we are closed, then I get to hand you your keys and you get to move in. But my job doesn't end there. I'm your realtor for life. So even after we've given you the keys, I'm still here to help you. So if you run into any problems with the house after the sale, 
I'm still your point of contact. Okay. And I will be for the rest of your life. You're never going to get rid of me. You're stuck. <laughs> You're stuck, but you don't get a diamond. Rough, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Super rough. Okay, so you get to take this home. You get to put it on your fridge. Okay. So that way you can go through it, and if you ever have any questions, you can refer to this. But I don't want you to just refer to this. I'm your main point of contact for literally every question. There's no question too small. There's no question too big. I'm happy to help and answer any. Okay. Um, so any questions? How do you feel about this? That's it. You feel pretty good about this? No mm -hmm. questions? Okay, great. So um, let's go ahead and download the app on your phone. You can start searching. I'll get you set up on the MLS. And I'll text you as soon as it's all set up and you've got everything. I'm going to text you the app right now. Text you the app. Make sure you tell me that you have it. Um, and then if you have any questions whatsoever, just let me know. If you see any houses that you want to see today, like, you're pre-approved. Let's go. Okay. Let's go do it. Um, I would call your lender next and talk to them about upping it if that's what you really want to do. If not, just let me know and we'll stick with the budget we have. Okay. Okay? Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much for meeting me. I'll walk you out. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you guys, we got some time. Do you have any questions? What if they have too many, in your opinion, unrealistic goals for their price range? Because Absolutely. So, like, how do you kind of let them know? I should be that person next time. <laughs> Make a fun but they card. have to have good account enough. <laughs> I, I need a walk in, I need an acre, but my budget's. But I want it all brand new. Like, how do you deal with it? Absolutely. Um, people don't like to be told. People do not want to be told. They want to be shown. So I would say, okay, great. Let's go ahead and look up some properties right now. I'm going to bring up everything that's available under three hundred thousand in your budget, and we're going to look at those together to see what we can find for you. That way, you can understand. Um, that way, we can see if we can find anything with all of your needs. Because then it's more of a visual for them. Because then it's going to come up with zero. Do you want me to show you how I do that? Do you want me to show you how I do that? Sure. Like on the MLS? Yeah. Okay, cool. Are there filters that you can put in? Uh, yeah, so there's filters. Where's my tent? It's on the other screen. I know, but it's I need it in here. <clears throat> oh, I need a thing. Hold on one second. Okay. I'll roll it and show you. But basically, I just go in and I put in everything that they want. And then I put in their price range. So let's bring up the MLS really quick. And I'm going to share the screen for them so they can see it. Hi, Zoom people. Okay. Can you turn the lights off for me, Melinda? I can barely see this. Screen. I'm sorry? Can you turn the lights off for me? Okay, let's turn them on brighter. The double. I did that. Oh, is that better? The other one's better. The other one's too. I'm blind. Okay. Now I'm night blind because the lights are not. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so let's take a look at the MLS. So here's. So here's Prospector, and I say, okay, Melinda. So it looks like you're looking for an acre of land, a five-bedroom, three-bath home, and you want it to be about 2,600 square feet, and your budget is, what was the budget around, like, um, 400000 Yes. Okay, great. Let's take a look on the MLS and see if we can find what you're looking for. So this is how all agents search for properties. So we're looking for residential, single family home, active properties. We're looking for under, oh, <coughs> dang, I need the keyboard. And luckily in all of our conference rooms, you have this capability because there's the TV with the computer mm -hmm. that you can look this up. Okay, so let's see here. So let's go. Price is 400 bedrooms. We need at least five, right? Like you have to have five. Okay, five bedrooms. Total baths was three. Yeah. Okay. Um, garage spaces, you wanted two. 
We needed that included. And the living area, what was the minimum again? 5,000 square feet. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> 2,000. 2, okay, so we need a minimum of 2,000 square feet. Okay, so let's. Oh, and we're looking in Sacramento County. We were looking in Alberta. North Highland. And Rio Linda. Let's go into. Okay, so unfortunately there are zero homes available for that price range. Would you like me to, let's take the pricing out of here, oh, and let's just see what is available. Be something tomorrow. No, there's just zero today. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there could so there could potentially be something, but I'm going to take the pricing out of here just so that we can see what does it usually cost okay. for this, okay? So it looks like there's actually zero homes available in that area <laughs> with that in question. So what the next thing that I like to do is I like to remove the living area and just see what is available um, with what you need. So I believe that it's the five bedrooms that's possibly holding us back. Okay. Um, would you be able to eliminate the five bedrooms and maybe go down to four? No. Yes, you could say no. Yeah, say no. No, I'd no. really rather not. Okay, so we have to have five bedrooms. So it looks like in these areas, it's gonna be hard for us to get you a five bedroom. Let me take out the garage and see if I can find anything like that. <clears throat> Okay, still nothing. <laughs> what about the, the bathrooms? Could you maybe go down to two bathrooms? So let's go to two bathrooms. Only that's still so nothing. So let's go down to four bedrooms and see if we can find anything there. Okay, so now we've got some results here. So in the areas that you're looking, there are two properties available that are four bedroom, two bath. Let's take a look at those right now and see how we're feeling. Okay, look, these are pretty, pretty, um, Good pricing, they're just in the North Highlands area. Is that something you'd be okay with? Yeah. Okay. So this is $379,900. Now this doesn't have the acreage that you're looking for either. <laughs> what did it look like on the inside? Oh no, I'm not in person. I saw like the list of oh, objects I'm helping. I always I laugh at the like shingle the wall. Doing, That's what I'm wondering. It's like, literally a wall of shingles, like roof shingles. Where? Is that not what that is by the fireplace? That's wood. Those are wood panels. Oh, okay. That's 1970s, girl. Oh, you better yeah. recognize. Better <laughs> <laughs> show some respect. I know. Hey, neither was I. That's just, it's like my favorite era of all time. If I could have lived in the 70s. I mean, I seem like a wood. If I could have been my age in the 70s, y'all. Oh, my God. Everything a little Okay, so I just kind of show them, right? And I'm like, this is what it is. And if, it's, and if they're, like, completely unrealistic, then I say, no problem. I'm gonna keep sending you properties. If we find anything that suits you, then let's go take a look. And then I and then I exit and I go find a buyer who's realistic. Pretty much. I keep them on a drip. I keep following up with them because they're still a human being. They're still somebody that can give me business. They might be unrealistic, but maybe they have a neighbor that's not. Maybe they have a brother that's not. Maybe they'll come back around. You know what I mean? So that may not be the house for you, but let's take a look at this other one. So this looks really cute. It's been redone. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this property? That picture in the backyard? Let's take a look. I like that you're being rough now. This is real. Oh, they don't have pictures in the backyard. We have to go take a look. But I know that it's... Show me the kitchen again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, no problem. It is in North Highlands. Like, if I could get away from that. Okay, so I guess what you're you're trying to show me is that I need to reset my thinking. Um, I just honestly, I just wanted to show you what's available 
because the areas that we're looking have very little inventory, quite a bit. So what um, would you suggest my way of thinking should be? Do I so, need to reset the area? Do I need to reset the expectations of what I want in the house? Um, I think that we might have to reset expectations of what you're looking for. Um, the bedrooms, the bedrooms and the bath, the bedrooms and the baths with the. Um, so let's just take let's take this out and let's just look at what's available. So okay. nothing. Let's just see what's actually because available. in all reality you're telling me I'm telling so you what I would like to see and if there's nothing available then what where is that? Well, let's see what is available. Okay. Um, because do you agree that buying a home is better than renting? I I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you are paying someone's mortgage. You're paying eighteen hundred dollars a month right now for a two bedroom one bath that you're renting, and who gets that eighteen hundred dollars? Not me. Right. And do you know if he's paid off that that property yet? No, I don't know. No. Um, so I can almost guarantee that he's probably already paid that property off, and he's just putting that directly into his pocket. Good for him. Yes, <laughs> it is good for him. It is super good for him, and yeah. we can get you in there one. We can get you there one day too. Um, but the thing is, is that instead of putting $1,800 in somebody else's pocket on a monthly basis, we could potentially get you into a property. It might not be exactly what you want. It might not be exactly what your dream is. Mm -hmm. But what it will do is it will be a vehicle that will create wealth for you. Does that make sense? And it's not like, mm -hmm. I'm not talking, you're going to be real. I'm talking, what if you had a, pro what if you had a property that created $200,000 in equity for you over the next two years? Do you have another opportunity in your life to make that amount of money in the next two years? Well, I don't really know if that's an avenue I would want to go down. No, I'm talking about buying a home. If you oh. buy a home okay. right now, mm -hmm. in the next two to three years, you could potentially make up to $200,000 oh, in, in equity. Right. No, I just mean in equity, just gaining that money and having it there. I mean, you don't have to sell a home to tap into this equity. Okay. You can get loans. Yeah, I did it. I own a home. Built up equity over the last couple of years, tapped into it, pulled money out, bought into another investment. Yeah. I would have never been able to do that. Yeah. You don't have to sell me on buying a house. I'm no, I just did. What I'm saying is, is that what you're looking for in your house that you buy might not actually be what you can get at the moment, but I don't want you to put off buying just because you can't get exactly what you want. Oh, got it. Do you okay. know what I mean? Yeah. We could get you into something now. We call it a starter home. Everybody does it. When I first bought my first home, I had to move back to North Highland. I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And people thought I was crazy, but I did it because what I was looking to gain over the next year. And I was paying $1,300 a month for a one bedroom apartment that I shoved my two children into. And I could not imagine if they raised the rent on me. Because right now that apartment, I know that it's renting out for $1,600 a month. Yeah. And my mortgage on the property that I bought is like 2000 Which is why I don't complain for my house that I'm renting for 18 I know. Yeah, I know. But it's still in the grand scheme of things, your landlord could decide one day that he needs to make more money. And he will. And it will be off of you. Mm -hmm. And instead, you could go buy a house, lock in your payment for the next 30 years, and potentially do what I did. Not only that, but say that you live in it for three years and you make, and you make some equity on it, we can sell it and you can buy the property that you do want. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I want. I don't want to tell you that you can't have what you want. I just want to tell you that we might have to change our parameters a little bit just to get you into something now so that you can stop paying rent to somebody else and you can start collecting equity. Because not only do you gain equity on the purchase price but or on the, on the value of the property, but every time you pay your payment, you pay yourself a portion of the payment towards that balance. So you're really just, it's a forced savings account. Okay. It's beautiful. So there's 21 homes total available in the areas that you're looking for. And we've got two bedroom, one bath, probably not for you, but we've got a bunch of three bedroom, two baths, ranging anywhere from 1,000 square feet up to 1528. And look, if you wanted a million dollar house, you could get one eventually. <laughs> but it's only a three bedroom, two bath. Can you believe it? Yeah, I can believe right? it. Right? On 10 acres. So we can get you to this dream home eventually, but we've got to start in these houses, right? And we can take out North Highlands because we've got one on 7th Street, we've got one on Front Street, 
The Magdalena. If doing this, I'd be like, just for shits and giggles, can you click on that million dollar house? Yeah, and I do that. And they do that. They're like, hey, I just want to see what it looks like. Absolutely. Bonding with your client is good. Don't ever st not stop. If you said that to me and we were in a thing, I'd be like, hell yeah, let's look at it right now together. Because <laughs> that would just be like a, a bonding kind of thing to do and like how to build rapport. And that's really important. If you were like, no, we're not going to click on that because you can't afford it. <laughs> They're not going to like you. <laughs> I feel like looking at uh, properties that are more than what you can afford kind of gives you this dream of like, oh, I want that. What did I, I just tell her she exactly can do? Exactly. She can start a starter home. She and can, can start a starter home and get there. Right? Right. On U Street? Just for fun. I was going to say, can we for fun? So overpriced. <laughs> what is this? Wow, how much does that so it's mostly for the A million dollars. It's for the it's for the it's for the Yeah, he's so not gonna get that. You're buying your van. It's, it's been on the market. market. It's been on the market for over a year. Oh, do you think he's gonna get it? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. no. Ten acres of Bill Ward seem like wants to budge. I ten acres of Bill Ward. Um one point eight million acres. One point eight? One wasn't even just one. How much how much is really? Oh my gosh. How much is realistic? I don't know. I'd have to run comps on what an average lot costs, but and it's yeah. done for residential though. So I mean, but you yeah, you could break up the lot and make a lot of money with it, but not for that much. That's a lot of money for that land. Jeez, oh, that's that's a long time price. Price. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, really quick though for my other people. Do you guys have any other questions? What about my my new people? None. Okay, let's look at the one. Nope, not here. Okay, so this one's also been on for a year. <laughs> now, I know that if they would drop their price down to a realistic price, this would be gone. Gone. What's the. No, it's the no shot. They just own all that land. $1.5 million. 1.4. 1.4. But how. And the house is cute. It is a cute house, and it looks like it's kind of updated. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not no, the land and the house together. It's got to be updated a lot. Are not, it's so not about that. that? It's five acres of land. Oh, I was wondering how many acres. So, as a real estate agent, what would you list that house for? Let's take a look. <laughs> Here's how you find out what land is worth. You look up lots in the exact area that you want to find out. All right, so I'm looking up lots in Rio Linda. Let's just look for one acre. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. No lots sold. No lots sold in the last six months. So I got to go back a year. Oh, maybe no acres sold. That's fine. Okay, seven lots sold in the last year. Um, here's two acres, 225,000. And there's no house on that. 225,000. There's no house on that. Okay, so let's do the math. So then you would value the house? Like no, you would. So 225,000 divided by two. An acre of land is 111,000, right? So if you've got 10 acres, 111,000. Let's just go 100,000 times 10. There's your 1 million. So yeah, the 10 acres is worth 1 million, but that house ain't worth 100 grand, right? And it's gonna cost me money to clear that. Okay, money so then now we've got five acres. That's 500 grand for the land. And the house is worth what, another 500? So that's a million. So I bet money, if either one of those properties dropped it down to 999,000, both of them would sell. Both of them would sell because somebody would come in and say, yes, that's realistic. But as soon as they start running numbers on this, because what I just did is very simple math. Yeah. And if they just, if somebody just starts running numbers, they're going to be like, what are you talking about? Right? And I bet they've already gotten offers on that for, for under a million and they're just sitting on it. Yeah. Do, do you use six months for houses and lots? I use six months if I can't, yes, houses sell faster than lots. So lots, you usually have to go back to here. But this lot was sold. It took 17 days to sell this lot. 
and it will close back in October, so it's not even that long ago. It's a very good comp. Very good comp. That's a realistic comparable. It just depends on how quickly you want to sell your property. But, all right, guys. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for showing up. My Zoom people, thank you so much for sticking around. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I have a question from my, uh, yeah. from my like seller's perspective. Okay. So if you go to the seller's um, appointment okay. and they've already kind of looked on Zillow, like what the estimated value is, and they've seen that the cost has doubled, does that, like the cost of that house, um, the estimate has doubled? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about estimates really quick. <laughs> so in the state of California, we are a disclosure state, meaning that every sale is disclosed publicly. So that's all Zillow is pulling, it's public record. The reason that people say that Zillow estimates are wrong, <coughs> what? Oh, the reason that people say that estimates are wrong is because in other states are not disclosure states. So the estimate is just pulling stuff out of their hat, right? Only on sales that are disclosed. In California, we are a disclosure state, so they actually are pretty accurate. And when people are like, oh, the estimates are, I'm like, not in California, they're actually pretty accurate. However, they're doing, they haven't been inside your home. So what they're doing is they're pulling aggregate information. So they're saying in one fourth square mile, this is how 10 homes were sold. Average price per square foot was this, your home is this square foot. Here you go. Here's your estimate, which is not accurate, but kind of, kind of. But once you step foot in the home and it's like the, the carpets are trashed and the, it needs to be repainted, that's when the estimates are wrong because they haven't seen your home. So what happens to those estimates? It doubles. It, so back in 2016, my parents sold their house for 550. Okay. I was just curious, and I looked on the road. It's 900. Absolutely, it's 2016. Absolutely, it's double. Yeah. yeah. Like, so I bought my like duplex in North Highland. Very good. In 2018, I bought it for $340,000. It is now worth $550,000. <laughs> it happened. It kind of just makes me almost angry to see how much, like, and they only sold it to their Oh, I get it. I'm like, you're angry because they made money? No. no. No, I guess you don't have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much your house is going to go there in a year? We don't know that. I don't have a crystal ball. I just bought a house last year and it's already 200k extra. Yeah. So there was a uh, when I was when I started in real estate, it was like every year you'd get about a five percent return depending upon the neighborhood because the house in the neighborhood matter too, right? That matters, right? Like if you have a house that's sitting in the middle of the hood and nobody's doing anything to it and you've done nothing to it and the neighborhood is going to trash, is your housing price going up? No, right? So it really depends on the neighborhood, the market, the house. Um, so yeah, it's not a surprise that it went up. In, in 2020, we saw a, a, up to, in some neighborhoods, a 32% increase in value. Since there hasn't been a crash, for a long, long time. Almost it, 20 years. Is it going to get to the point where it's just the prices are ridiculous to buy, right? Yeah. And then people will stop buying. And, and then, then the prices will come down. It's a simple supply and demand and then ratio. The price will come down when they can't sell houses anymore at that price. Do they go all the way back down or what? No. Why would they go all the way back down? Where will help, help all when they go down? Or get to that? I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> And neither do you, and you can't quote on that. When people say, well, how's it, what's it going to do? I don't know. I don't know. What do they usually do when that happens? And there'll be a correction of some sort, but it's not going to be a crash. A crash happens because of an, an, a tra something. Something initiates a crash. The last one was fraud. Yeah. John, uh, our broker, did a whole presentation on that at one of our team meetings. And I think it got emailed out to everybody yeah, with yeah. a link to it. And you know, a whole presentation was really helpful actually, kind of like explaining why the market crashed and like where we are now and what. Yeah, we're in a very like. healthy market. We're in a very healthy market. Okay, we I'm not very low unemployment. Really 
systems. We have a very, everything is looking really great for our market in, in our economy. So in order for a crash to happen, one of those things would have to fail, right? Something would have to fail. Um, so I won't, I, I don't see a crash, but yeah, eventually when the prices get too high and people stop, then people aren't gonna buy. They're gonna say, no, that's too expensive. And then we'll start to see how we start start to come down. Because of the demand. It's, it's because of supply and demand. <clears throat> so that's that's really the, the main thing that's gonna cause house prices. The most likely thing that will cause house prices to go down is the lack of demand. Correct. Housing affordability. Well there's no telling how much that will change it. No telling. And anybody that predicts it is talking out of their neck. I feel like a lot of uh, I mean, people the sellers just gonna have to adjust to, to get their house sold, bring it to price down to what Yeah, you just need to price it accurately. But we so pricing, that's why you have to run comps. You can't walk into a neighborhood and say, Oh, your home will sell for this. No, I have to look at your home, I have to price it out because your home and, and who knows, there could be a dip. There was a in 2021 on June 15th. They did a mini, like, remember when we didn't have to, COVID went away? June 15th, COVID went away. <laughs> it went away for a month. Housing went through the roof. People started loading their homes on the market. So I had a seller that said, I want to sell my home. I said, you better do it before June 15th. Because on June 15th, after June 15th, you're going to get less money. They waited. June 15th, they tried to sell it. And there was too many homes on the market. They only got, like, four offers or something like that. The very next month, they shut us down again. All the homes came off the market, and sellers were back to getting 21 offers. So that's how that's how much it, it depends. That's how much it factors. You know, like one week it could be this, one week it could be that. It's the same with interest rates. One day an interest rate is this, the next day it's that. There is no predictability in the market. We don't, you can't predict it. So if people ask me questions like that, I'm like, I I wish I had a crystal ball, man. I can only tell you what's going on today. Tomorrow could be a whole other story. Tomorrow we could have killer bees from Antarctica <laughs> on Earth come down and start a whole thing, and then we're no inventory anymore. You know what I mean? Like that's literally what happened with the pandemic. One day I was going out to do open houses, and the next day I wasn't, and my entire life and business changed. And you're either going to pivot and find the opportunity, or you're going to be paralyzed. And so that's what people are looking for. They're looking for an answer so that they can make a decision so that they can time the market. But like Warren Buffett is very, very much smarter than me. And he says, you cannot time the market. You need to spend time in the market. So I would rather buy a house at any point in time just to get into the market than to spend time trying to figure out what's the best time calculating, making sure the stars align. It's never going to happen. So best time for you to buy a house was five years ago. And it will continuously be that way. The very best time for you to buy a house was 30 years ago, you know, because you would, because the people that were in the crash, the people that bought at the height of the crash have already recovered. Their house went down and it came back up. It's just like when you get buy stock, you got to buy and hold. The people that, that do short term gains, make short term plans, they get, they get small gains. So what you're saying, even though their, their uh, value went down, they should have kept making their payments. Even though the value was less than absolutely, yeah, you signed a contract that said you would. So you just waited for it. Otherwise, you're going to let it foreclose. The people that let their home foreclose probably couldn't actually afford that payment. We won't get into that. <laughs> Do agents uh, for buyers that want to buy a new build? I've heard that new builds they don't work. Um, that true or? No, it's not true. They do work with agents. It just depends. Lenar has won't pay a commission right now, but when they need us, I just buy Lenar. House yeah, when they summer. need us, they will. They just don't need us right now. There's too high buyer demand, so they don't really need us. But when they need us again, they'll be back. All right, guys. Thank you so much for showing.